Welcome back to the Broadway show. Wait, God, what? It's on, it's on, listen. Oh, well, Anthony McCartan is a go-to guy in Hollywood for writing biopics. The Whitney Houston movie, I Want to Dance with Somebody, is in movie theaters right now. But that's not all. McCartan has two shows on Broadway right now as well. The Collaboration and A Beautiful Noise, the Neil Diamond musical. Here's Beth Stevens with a new edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Anthony McCartan is on Broadway with two very different shows about real people. I'm here to talk with him all about it. You are so well known for writing about real people. And not just real people, but icons. What has to click for you, for you to get excited about a subject? Good question. It's, you, you've got to be interested in the subject. What is it? Uh, Goethe said you have to have an elective affinity with your subject. So you've got to find, you've got to find something in that life that talks to you. A big box that I need to tick before I take anything on is, is there anything new to say about this person? That's an especially relevant question when the person's famous. And if they're an icon, even more relevant. And so what ticked that box for you, for Neil Diamond and for Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat? Well, in the case of Neil Diamond, I'll contradict myself immediately and say that I, I was sort of resistant to doing musicals a little. I didn't feel that it was my métier, really. But I got a phone call from a producer, Ken Davenport, and he said, are you interested in doing a musical? And I said, well, I'm not a natural choice for a musical. I, I've never done one. Who do you have in mind? What's the subject? And he said, Neil Diamond. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> because my mother, when I grew up, my whole childhood had two pictures on the mantelpiece. One was of the Pope and one was of Neil Diamond. Whenever she was stressed or something, she would drop the needle on the Neil Diamond record. So Neil Diamond was really very much the soundtrack of my childhood. And then you got to meet Neil Diamond. I got to meet Neil Diamond. I had a harrowing moment where Mr. Davenport once again said, could you deliver the first draft of the script to Neil? He would like, like to read it. I drove down to Malibu, his house in, in Malibu, and uh, I thought I was just dropping off the script. There was this table set up in the middle of the room and a chair facing two others. And him, he and his wife sat in the two. And I was expected to sit in the first. And I thought, what on earth is going on here? And they asked me to perform the musical for them the entire musical to Neil Diamond. There was no way I could say no to it. And so I ended up starting act one, scene one, lights up. And I performed the whole musical for Neil. And he rewarded me by teaching me uh, uh, Sweet Caroline on the guitar. What took the box for Andy and Jean-Michel Basquiat um, was within one day I saw an exhibition of Jean's work at the uh, at the Brandt Foundation and then I walked across to the Whitney and there was a retrospective of Andy's work and they were so different and when I found out that they, they had worked together it seemed again another unique opportunity to look at two different uh, characters very different I thought uh, if I could put those two guys in a room and and have them you know lock horns and you know dispute the, that issue of of what our, our it is and what we, we wanted to do then uh, that might be interesting so the play emerged out of all that Tell me about balancing the reality of the person, the research, with invention. Yeah, key question, key question. We're, we're always scolded, you know, when you take on, uh, you know, a living subject or a historically well-known subject, is how much license you have. But I've always maintained that the, the facts themselves will get you to the threshold of the house, but you need art to get you inside and have a cup of tea. If I just render a photograph to you, then I'm simply an historian and I'm constrained just by the facts. And the facts only ever tell half the story. I call it sort of inspired speculation. You gotta do the research, you have to know, you have to honor the facts. You cannot do injury to your subject. But beyond that, then you have to dream yourself into what could have tried transpired in, that, in those rooms. What would that person most likely have said to that person? How can I do justice to their beliefs and their and the way they talked and what they used to say and what they, you know, what opinions they held, and then put them in in, in conversation with someone else who challenges that. And I love that. I love putting um, polarities in opposition. But for me, as a writer, to inhabit opinion inhabit opinions that I don't actually hold, so I actually have to contradict myself. So I, I did a play called The Two Popes, which turned into a movie. I had a, a sort of affinity with one view, um, which was the liberal pope, uh, and I had to then give equal weight to the opinions and views of this other arch-conservative pope. And in so doing, I started to empathize with that position. And I think that is, is um, a really interesting 
exercise and empathy that works for me. It's very healing for me to be able to you know, sort of go outside your normal perceived positions. Because where I would love in my work to be able to move an audience is from certainty to, to open-mindedness. Tell me about this trilogy that started with The Two Popes, then goes to the collaboration, and then yeah. your next play with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. It's, it's essentially around this one, exactly what I'm talking about, it's dispute. I've called it the worship trilogy for want of a better, all-embracing word. Um, and the first one looked at religion, the worship of religion. This one looks at worship of art, what we want art to be, what we want it to do. And the third one is worship of money. Um, and l looking at these these modern obsessions that we hold and examining them and turning them over a little.